Today, I'm going to show you a way to extend the functionality of stable diffusion by adding some additional awesome free models to put your creative touch on creative outputs. Well, the reason I wanted to do this is because I want to leverage the specific enhancements of every model that's out there and find something that works for me and for you. I don't have a powerful PC yet. So we will be using Google Colab, the paid version. Um, I've got a monthly subscription. You may get this working on the free version, but I haven't tried it yet. So let's jump in. Right, welcome. So first things first, open up Colab and start up your server. All right, I'm just gonna quickly show you that I'm using the Colab Pro. So click on your settings and open up the uh, page and you'll be able to see the sign up process. So I've got the Colab Pro. Um, I'm using New Zealand dollars. So that might be why your dollars is a bit different than mine. Right, first things first, let's open up the link that I sent through to you on the description. And we're gonna be installing the Stable Diffusion 1.5 Web Colab. All right, click on it and it's a stable version. So that's great. What we want to do now is just have a look at the code, make sure that there's nothing funky in there, and hit the run button. Uh, there's a warning that comes up. You can click on run anyway, and this will now install the necessary libraries and the necessary information for stable diffusion to run. This does take a little bit of time. Um, it took about seven to eight minutes on my side. Once completed, you'll see at the bottom of the page um, of the runtime, it's going to have a number of Colab URLs to visit. Um, I like the Gradio link, so click on the Gradio link and open it up. And welcome to the Stable Diffusion Automatic uh, Web UI. All right, so you can see over there, those are the engines that we're going to be using at the moment. So it's the version 1.5 of Stable Diffusion. You can click the refresh button, there's the generate button, and um, ultimately all the tabs. So you're starting off with text to image, and um, this is the interface that you'd be working with. All right, so let's pop in a couple of commands. Um, I'll paste these in the description as well for you to have a play with. Uh, so we need a positive uh, command and a negative prompt. Um, negative prompts just um, make the image a lot better. And also gonna get funky eyes and funky hands and stuff like that. All right, um, a couple of settings that I have found have worked really well. Um, so choosing the right sampling method. So choose the one that I've selected over there and uh, put your sampling steps up to 30. I found that works quite well. Enable the check boxes for high res as well as the faces and um, it'll show you a little bit more information there. All right, everything else should be fine. All right, again, just double click and just make sure you're working on the right model and you can click on the generate button. So this is now pretty, uh, pretty much similar to other AI tools where you're generating images from text. Um, I found that Google Colab works quite well. It works quite quickly. Um, so in terms of time spent and CPU spent, it doesn't really, um, hurt too much. All right, so we've got an image now that's been created and um, if we wanted to save it, click on the save button and it'll then allow us to open up a download button and you can click on the download. So all really cool and really fun. All right, so now we know that Stable Diffusion is actually working in our space. So what I wanna do now is have a bit of an explore around Civit AI. So click on the Civit AI tab in the web UI open up a new browser window and open up civitai.com. This is a great place to see different artwork and different models that have been rendered by other artists. Um, you can have a browse around here to see which type of images or which type of um, creative outputs appeal to you and you can start having a look at how others have done it. So for this demo, I'm gonna use the realistic version um, and you can ultimately click on your models over there and download as many, whatever model that piques your interest. So first things first, make sure you tick the search by term. Search term can be realistic and you can say get list. All right. Um, 
you'll then be able to select the model so re realistic version 1.3 and make sure you select the um, the version all right so click on the version and we can go for uh, the stable version over there so you can click one of those um, again if these things don't work what i suggest you do is just try different ones so sometimes they don't work with your version um, but that's okay um, you haven't downloaded anything yet so it's pretty simple right so once you've selected the, the version you want to use make sure you select the um, uh, report file or the model reference and there's the download list that'll come up over there so what you need to do is just click on the fourth download model so it's actually giving you the uh, steps in that little box over there so first get that then do that save images and download models so click on the download model it'll then start the download in your collab environment it doesn't show you any progress here so that's important to know don't click it again or else it's going to download it again all right so if you go into your collab you'll see that it is starting to download and um, it'll give you the file size over there all right so go back double check it and um, just wait for it to complete all right so once it's completed it'll say successfully downloaded all happy all right now what we can do is go back into stable diffusion in the web ui let's click back on your text to image which is your standard space all right um, if you click on the drop down for the stable diffusion checkpoint you'll notice that it isn't available. You need to click the refresh button. It will then come up with the realistic um, uh, model that we want to use. Let's load that up. And ultimately what we can now do is use that model to create our new images. Right, so that's the first part of the session. The second part is really to level up and add some extra models so um, having a look around we can now go back to the civet ai and what i want to do is look for the dream shaper plugin or model um, it's quite uh, quite nice and um, if you want to have a look at it just obviously go back to your civet ai's um, uh, web page but let's type in the terms uh, dream shaper get list and um, start having a look for the item so click on dream shaper under the model and what you want to do now is click on the uh, version and if you don't know which version you're actually looking for um, what you can do now is you can basically see underneath dream shaper over there you'll see the different versions so 6.3 uh, 6.2 5 etc etc so that's on the top there so let's choose um, yep so let's just choose the correct checkpoint and we can download it all right so we've done the version 5 and we're going to start downloading it um, and it'll take a little bit of time to download i think it's seven or eight gig um, so let that go right so once the um, dream shape has been downloaded you can um, ultimately um, enable the model as per previous steps and um, uh, change up your uh, text and your prompts if you want to get different prompts and get some examples just make sure you go back to the um, civet ai have a look for some images copy the positive prompts copy some of the negative prompts um, and just basically look for any tips and tricks that are available there Right, um, I realize that some of it might not be as 100% clear as possible, so I changed the screen to white. What you can now do is have a look at that um, page over there, and I've highlighted steps one, two, three, four, five, and six, and um, how to actually navigate it. Um, so if you're having any troubles, just refer back to this page over here. If you like this content, um, please like and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching. Happy AIing!